So joining us now, Democratic Congressman Joe Nagus of Colorado. He's the chair of the Democratic Policy and Communications Committee, and he was previously an impeachment manager for the second impeachment trial of Donald Trump. I guess I should start with impeachment and the impeachment inquiry into President Biden and get your thoughts on that. And, and then I want to jump to the, the politics of Hunter Biden. But first, um, what do you make of this inquiry that Kevin McCarthy has sort of been cornered into launching? Uh, well, good morning, uh, Mika, and, and good to be with you. I, I think the inquiry is yet another example of Speaker McCarthy, unfortunately, capitulating to the far right wing of his caucus. And it is further evidence of the extremism that has taken root, unfortunately, in the House Republican conference. Uh, as you know, there's no evidentiary basis for the impeachment inquiry. Speaker McCarthy couldn't convince his own Republican colleagues that that was the case, sufficient to have a vote on an inquiry, much less the American people. I've yet to hear any kind of cogent articulation of the constitutional standard uh, of impeachment in terms of the evidence that they, they supposedly uh, say that they have. So, uh, look, I, I just think that this is, again, emblematic of the chaotic and dysfunctional approach that House Republicans have taken since they gained power. And I don't think, I, empirical data to, that I've seen uh, suggests that the American people are, are not focused on this uh, and not uh, concerned about it, but rather are concerned about the core functions of government, including the fact that in 15 days, the government may very well shut down because of Republican dysfunction in the House. And Congressman, that's where we wanted to go next, this idea of a possible looming government shutdown. Certainly, real divisions on the Republican side as to whether or not, frankly, some of them even want to keep the lights on. Uh, so talk to us about the possibility of where, where you see negotiations going these next uh, 15 days, uh, and also the possibility that a continuing resolution can be passed to, to, to at least give you guys more time to figure this out, because suddenly there seems to be real doubts growing about that, too. Well, uh, both great questions. With respect to your second question, I certainly hope uh, that that is a possibility. But I would say just more broadly as a general proposition, what is clear to the American people, uh, House Democrats under the leadership of Hakeem Jeffries are fighting for the American people to deliver real results. House Republicans are fighting each other. And the infighting, the extremism, the chaos, the dysfunction, it has real consequences for our economy and for Americans across our country. We saw that just a mere few months ago with respect to the debt ceiling crisis where House Republicans Republicans brought us to the brink of potentially defaulting uh, on, on our debt. And now, of course, uh, four months later, 15 days before a government shutdown, House Republicans are incapable of even putting an appropriations bill on the floor. They haven't done so uh, since July. Unfortunately, Jonathan, uh, they have a wing within their caucus uh, that is unwilling to pass a continuing resolution, unwilling to pass an omnibus bill, unwilling to work with Democrats in good faith, and apparently unwilling to pass individual appropriation bills, which means uh, that, unfortunately, chaos is the state of affairs in Washington. And I worry a great deal about the ramifications for our country. And Congressman, you just heard our conversation about the president's son, Hunter, uh, and the criminal charges that have been filed against him. He's also, of course, the center of countless Republican probes that are seemingly uh, meant to sort of create a whataboutism between the Biden legal troubles and those facing Donald Trump. Uh, what should Democrats be doing right now? What is the pushback that you and your colleagues should be putting forth uh, against all things Hunter Biden? Well, I would say, again, more broadly, I agree with uh, Mika's comment earlier about her articulation as to how Democrats and my colleagues and I have responded to, to this news. And, and that is simply this. The rule of law is sacrosanct in our country. And so I, I think it's important for the process to, to play out uh, without any kind of interference. Uh, I do think, to Senator McCaskill's point, uh, that the fact that the Department of Justice has pursued uh, those charges certainly rebuffs uh, the you know, allegations of impropriety that Republicans have made you know, consistently, which are baseless. Uh, so I, beyond that, I, I'm not going to opine on you know, a criminal indictment of a private individual. I would say with respect to the impeachment inquiry, uh, which, as you know, uh, has not actually been formally initiated by the House of Representatives via a vote, notwithstanding Speaker McCarthy's statements to the contrary just a week ago, uh, clearly Hunter Biden is not the president, and uh, there has been no evidence of wrongdoing by President Biden. And so at the end of the day, um, I think uh, the American people will understand that this is political theater, and they will, I, I think, they expect us to actually do the basic work of governing, as I mentioned. 
And Congressman, before you go, uh, we know that U.S. Uh, federal wildland firefighters are facing a pay cut and you'd like to do something about it. Uh, tell us about it. Yeah, well, thanks for asking that question, uh, Mika. It just, again, another example of, of a core priority for us in the House. House Democrats are working hard to ensure that our federal wildland firefighters are paid. About 11,000 federal wildland firefighters across the country who, absent congressional action, will face up to a 50 percent pay cut in just 15 days. Uh, that would be dire. It's unconscionable. It should be an unacceptable outcome to every lawmaker. Of course, here in Colorado, as you know, we've been hit hard by wildfires in recent years. Uh, because of President Biden and the leadership of congressional Democrats, we were able to get across the finish line a pay increase in the infrastructure bill, which was historic in its own right. But unfortunately, uh, those provisions uh, are expiring at the end of this month. And so the president has submitted a supplemental budgetary request. We've got to get this done. Done. Our wildland firefighters deserve it. They are bravely sacrificing on our behalf every day across the Rocky Mountain West, and, and we intend to ensure that this gets done before the end of the month. Democratic Congressman Joe Nagus of Colorado, thank you so much for being on this morning. Thank you.